life. Something all living human beings have in common. Something so simple connecting us to one another, but very complex as well. One tiny deviation in the genetic code, or DNA, can turn an otherwise typical human life into a complicated and unknown journey for families affected by a genetic disorder. Such genetic disorders are not usually predictable and not easily found, and have the capacity to leave patients, families, and caretakers worried and confused. The field of medical genetics can be tricky to navigate. Terminology and clinical findings can make it difficult for families to understand what they are experiencing. Most are completely unaware of just how complicated our genetic code really is. If all the bases in the human genome were spread out one millimeter apart, they would extend from Memphis to Los Angeles. But these families are not alone. Genetic disorders are actually relatively common. They can be seen most commonly in the form of Down syndrome and other recognizable genetic conditions. All patients diagnosed with a chromosome disorder share one thing, an altered genetic code. A clinical geneticist is an MD who is specially trained in genetics. That is to look for unusual features um, and unusual conditions. We're trained to look for disorders that may affect up to 1 in 100,000 people in the population. So we get referrals from primary care doctors who are getting really a second opinion about what's going on with a child or an adult for an unusual condition. Um, because we are trained to look for unusual conditions, we can look at things very differently from how a primary care doctor does. So we may see things ranging from kids who aren't developing as you would expect to children who have multiple congenital anomalies, so unusual features from the time that they're born, to adults who have similar problems or have developed similar problems. A typical healthy person has 23 pairs of chromosomes, or 46 total chromosomes, which hold our genetic code. The description of a person's chromosomal makeup as observed down a light microscope is called their karyotype. Sometimes, early on in development, these chromosomes can be altered, leaving the person with a different chromosomal pattern, or karyotype. And while most people are familiar with some of the more common forms of chromosome disorders, like Edwards syndrome, where a person has an extra 18th chromosome, Many people all over the world are affected by other, more rare disorders. In some cases, pieces of the chromosomes are lost, resulting in a chromosome deletion. In other cases, pieces are multiplied, which results in what is called a chromosome duplication, which simply means there is too much genetic information. There are an infinite number of chromosome disorders. There are some patients who have no noticeable side effects from a genetic mutation. They may live their entire lives unaware of any genetic condition. Others, however, show signs from birth, or may develop conditions later on in life that point to a genetic abnormality. Not all children need to be seen by a geneticist if they have developmental delay. Um, our usual rule of thumb is two unusual features, whether developmental delay, unusual facial features, other congenital anomalies, really warrants a genetics referral. A genesis can bring a pair of fresh eyes to um, looking at a patient because parents and pediatricians or primary care doctors are used to seeing the patients over years or maybe even months. We can look at them from a brand new perspective and sometimes notice things that other people may not notice. When there has been a loss or gain of chromosomal material, the symptoms arising may include a combination of physical problems, health problems, learning difficulties, and or challenging behavior. And the severity of effects occurring may depend upon which parts of which chromosomes are involved. What I think geneticists can do is give prognosis. So it can be things to look out for in the future because obviously a child's gonna present with whoever a child's gonna present with. Certainly, earlier interventions make a huge difference. So sometimes giving a child a diagnosis helps in getting services to, for that child. Um, but in the future, it's to hope to look for other things and prevent complications from happening.
Thanks to medical professionals, researchers, and other resources, there is now more information available to help families and caregivers cope with and understand a diagnosis. Parents should not blame themselves ever for a genetic disorder. Genetic disorders almost always are because of just pure accident. Uh, parents didn't do anything that caused this. There was nothing they could have done to prevent it. Most importantly, families living with a child who has a chromosome disorder should know that they are not alone and should not be ashamed. No matter how unique their child's genome is, someone, somewhere, may be experiencing similar conditions. This is why follow-up care with a clinical physician and establishing a support system is critical. The hardest thing to do for a parent after getting the diagnosis is to listen to the physician's aid. Take it easy and we'll help you through this. Um, a parent's natural reaction is, I want to find out everything I can about this, which is what all parents should want to do. The best thing to do is listen to what the doctor's telling you, because we do have some experience and we have ability to look back at literature, uh, other cases that have been reported, and give you good information based on that. The next thing that parents are naturally inclined to do in, in this age and time is look on the internet. And that's a good thing, uh, because the internet does allow you to connect with other families who have chromosomal anomalies that may be similar to your child's. Regardless of your situation, there is hope. Hope that we will continue to find new ways and new answers to improve the quality of the lives of these very special people. And hope that families will continue to connect and that no one will be left feeling alone. I would say the most, the most important thing to do is to listen to what the physician's telling you um, and ask lots of questions. There are gonna be a lot of things that have come up and the only way you're going to find the answer is by asking it.